Well, hello, my fellow Americans and fellow Christians, and thank you for joining me for another day of the Word of the Lord here in the United States of America. Peace be unto you, and peace be unto the world. My fellow Americans, the fears of 2012 continue to surround us. I, as one, have not ignored the warnings of possible devastating and tragic events ahead, not only here in America, but also the world. Yet before I continue on, I would like to remind all people everywhere that the good Lord said, No man knows the day, the time, or the hour. I even furthermore would like to add that we remember those who have predicted our destruction that is supposedly to come in 2012. And I also would like to add, we need to remember those who have disrespected the President of the United States by including him as an instigator of a one world government that is to magically appear in the world through the United States and by his presidential power. If they are incorrect about our destruction, about the president, and about a one world government in 2012, I think it is more than wise to consider them mistaken and completely distorted in their views which wisdom would speak to us profoundly and say for us to no longer to listen to such men or support them. People today have 2012 on the back of their mind. At the forefront of their concerns is their paychecks, their grocery bills, education, and if their children are going to be going off to war. These are the real issues facing our nation. Of equal importance is the conquest of politics, friends and neighbors, business, and religion by those who are determined to undermine the brotherhood of their American countrymen through the menace of organized control. This is a great threat to our society, for it eliminates and prohibits the free exercise of men and women to cooperate freely with one another seeking the progress and greater good of their neighbor. This senseless activity does not allow us to see one another as fellow human beings and does not envision that when one suffers, we all suffer. It teaches and determines that others are lesser if they differ from us in belief or lifestyle. This is a blemish on the American landscape and all the more here in 2012 it is determined to raise its ugly head through its continual acts of injurious physical force and unwarranted exertion of psychological conquests over children, teenagers, young adults, and the mature. Our greatest failure as a nation is we have failed to teach the love of God for all people for all time. We have failed to teach compassion, love, and consideration for one another. And we have failed to teach that judgmentalism is a sure way to more heartache, resentment, hostility, and social problems than anything else. The preference or belief of one man or woman over another is not decided by you, me, politics, or the church. This is only decided by any man or woman, individually, and it is between them and their Maker. If so be, they believe in God. The violent activity we see increasing in our country does not hold this conviction. Our society takes it upon itself today to produce its own creed without respect of the freedom of all individuals to express their lives in whatsoever fashion they choose. For all men and women have the right to be who they are in a free society, and they have the right to share in the moments of life that bond us to the joys of living just as much as any other individual or fellow man. Ultimately, all must choose their own path in life and live it accordingly. In closing, the greatest fear we face in 2012 is not disastrous events or outcomes. Our greatest fear is the individual conscience, disengaging from uniting in mind and heart with our fellow countrymen, preserving America, and strengthening the assurance of freedom and prosperity for all. God bless you. 
and God bless the United States of America.